I'm telling you folks, this is these are the best teams out out there. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth is very confident about how good his teams are. Now that I am actually pretty confident these are good teams and uh, Tom Ford deserves some shout outs real quick for helping me develop a few of them at the very least and uh, let's let's real quick however folks Oh, well, also, I'll point out there's an offensive teams video as well. You can find that in the video description, or if you wait to the end of this video, you'll be able to find a link to it. You can just click on that. And a huge shout out to my patrons. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. I really couldn't do this without you. I hope you know that I appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you so, so much for your support. I, I couldn't do this without you. Should I just keep going in a circle? We could just have a patron appreciation video right now uh huge shout out to the people who aren't my patrons apparently uh if you want to support this channel for free please uh help me by hitting that like button subscribe comment let's mount the algorithm together folks it's it's a nice um thing to do i'm very confident today you can tell i'm very confident in my lack of confidence let's uh let's get going here folks uh, so, it's it's been tricky. The, the Datacron sets are just so wild, folks. We're on set 17. Set 16 is ready to dust, but we have one more season of enduring that madness. And so, a few of the, te a few of the uh, Datacrons actually got nerfed pretty hard. A few of the interactions. The Rolo interaction is just gone. It's a bad team now. Rolo is awful. Everyone regrets Relic aiding her. I'm sorry for everyone. I'm not that sorry. But we also uh, that also means that Leia is fine on defense again. Uh Leia is pretty strong on defense actually. And uh, you know there's there's Eeth Kron that that got nerfed. I think the Gideon Kron took a hit. But the big thing is the big news is all the teams that Rolo used to counter, which were a lot of them, that she no longer counters because she is now awful again. So congratulations to CG for making an awful team awful. That's that's fine, I suppose. So Leia, there's a couple options here, folks. Uh, if you want to go with the like pretty bland, I get I lose to Inquisitors most of the time version, you can do the the option marked as lesser, and it, it's a pretty standard team. You also are going to be losing out on Captain Rex going with Phoenix to counter Inquisition because that's on the table now. We talk about that in the offensive teams video. But if you want the best defensive option, if you want to just completely nuke your chances of being able to kill Inquisition as well, because Sabine is also required for that counter, then all you got to do is take this top team. You also are going to nuke your CLS team, and that's, that's unfortunate and all of that, but there's some good reasons for it that you can actually use the remnants of some of your CLS stuff. Uh, go, go check out my offense video, guys. It's uh, It explains all of it. Uh, honestly, part of the CLS team going on uh, an Afra squad is, is completely bizarre to me. But one way or another, we have Leia. P take your choice, po folks. Pick your poison. Leia with Drogon, and then whatever other nonsense you want is fine with me. I don't care. Now, here's one that we talked about a little bit in my offensive team's video, but Treya is on defense. She's really good on defense. She does a lot of really annoying things, and you can also put Lord Vader with them to be even more annoying. Now, you'll lose to a few other Galactic Legends still, but this totally shuts down the Bo-Katan counter, which everyone is just assuming they're going to be able to use on you, and so maybe what you do is... I, I don't even know. Just um, put it in the bag zone is what I know. Put it in the bag zone and uh, hope hope that they, you know, you got to put other good teams on defense as well. Put them in the front. The things that are go people are going to use to counter this are going to, uh, you know, like Bane, I think. I think Darth Bane actually counters this decently. If you can put the Kenobi or the the sorry the Quadme team on defense in front of in the front zone, a lot of people are going to use Bane on that. And then when he gets to the back, 
Bane isn't available. So there you go. There's your strategy. Just stick to that and, um, you know, then get real angry at Zareth when, at old Zareth when, when you fail inevitably because of some other weird thing. But we also have Ray. Uh, Ray and Nest. Nest is just so friggin' annoying, guys, with her Datacron. Put her on defense. Pull Holdo here to make it so that they can't even target Nest very often, because Holdo is friggin' annoying too. And, uh, you know, beef her up a little bit if you want. Calcastis makes the whole team more obnoxious because he's an Ufu and he gives buffs and does stupid things and makes them tough to kill. It's all together an unpleasant team if you add these together, of course. Cal would really love to go with Seer and Malakos. We talked about that in the Offensive Teams video as well. So, um, uh, you know, we're, we're at the point, folks, with GAC where we have to kind of just stack all the good characters and teams together and trying to find those synergies that make sense based off of Datacron synergies. And so this is one of the teams that makes sense, even though it kind of kills at least one other team, at least a little bit. We have a lot for offense, though. We have a ton of teams for offense. Go check that out, guys. Uh, we also have Jabba on defense. And you can just put whatever you want on him, and he'll inevitably die in several different frustrating ways. And maybe you'll get, like, one hold the whole season. So congratulations. But it's better than the struggle of learning how to use him on offense, folks, because no one wants to do that. I do have videos that you can go watch if you want to learn how to do that. But... No one wants to, and I don't blame you. Just put them on defense and feel good about... So you can pat yourself on the back. This is how you do that, just as a two, quick tutorial. And, I mean, it's more like a one one tutorial. Like, if, if you really, you know, you don't need two, two times of me showing you how to do it. So, <laughs> Anyways, Jabba, go, you, you pat yourself on the back because you put a Galactic Legend on defense. It's amazing, guys. Congratulations. You don't have to worry about learning how to use him on offense. He is a good tool on offense, though. Uh, we have General Skywalker here. He could be used on offense. You could put him on defense. Defense, he's got a lot of cool options. Like, you could just put him on defense, like, on the top slot of one of your zones or, like, the second slot or the third or the fourth. Or you could put him like on a, in a different zone in different like lots of options for General Skywalker. There are a couple of good Kron options for him as well. I like him on defense because he's so awful on offense. Be not not awful in terms of effectiveness. Yes, he kills some teams. He I think he's showing some promise against Queen Amidala teams, for instance, because of how many buffs they have. But I do think that on defense it's nice because. You don't hemorrhage banners with other teams, and if you want to, if you're facing someone who only dropped 10 against you because it's a super efficiency meta or something, then General Skywalker will drop 8 of those 10 for you in one fight, and hopefully you even win. Uh, so, Gen General Skywalker on offense, that's fine. On defense, I prefer. I prefer that. Um... Gun Guns, why bother learning how to use this team on offense when it served us so well on defense for its entire lifespan so far? You just put a support cron with them, and it feeds Boomadir and Tarples with all their offense. It makes Phalanx really tough. Jar Jar stares his own vapid way into getting a bunch of good damage on people. This team is good on defense. It'll also be good on offense, but why should we learn how to use that team either? Honestly, like Jabba and the frogs i mean jabba eats frogs right so uh, not that that makes any sense in the context of this okay so we, we said that this team could go on offense and it can i think it kills jabba you can put it on defense uh here's the thing we don't know for sure how well adrad's gonna counter this i think all you really need is that level six for the rogue one team uh if you have k2 so and his cron that's even better i think and uh, this worked really well in 3v3. The question is, does it apply in 5v5? I'm not totally sure. Not totally sure. I think, though, if you put this on defense, expect a lot of fish to be countering you with it. So, I, I mean, typically put it on offense. But if you don't have any other choice or you want to keep other things, uh, you want to put other things on your offense and just have, like, kind of a gimme squad, 
you could do this. I mean, if you're going to do that, maybe you could put this uh, in the back zone or something and put Iden in front so people can use their fish team on Iden, and then maybe they don't have a really easy counter to this when they get to the back, something like that. You, you could do something. Um, This is the last time we're going to be able to use the Watkron, so why don't we just put the entire trench team on defense with Watt, with his Kron, and watch some people fail on us while other people don't. Because that's how it works. That's what GAC is. After all, it's a good team on defense, folks. Honestly, uh, you know, you make make your team, if you mod them really nicely and, and stuff, make your Dooku really fast, make your Jingo and Trench and Watt and Newt really fast, you'll, you'll do, you'll do well. It's, it's fine. It's a good team. I, you know, once the Watt Kron is gone, it'll, it'll be a little more. It'll go into obscurity a little more. I do think the trench is underestimated by the majority of people out there, and there are reasons for that. But it is it is actually significantly stronger. And I, I was I debated it for a while on putting it on defense as opposed to keeping it for offense. The thing is, there's just not a clear path of what exactly it's going to counter. On the other hand, I think it still it gets countered by quite a few things as well. So uh, use it your own risk. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, hey, this thing doesn't counter things, and it gets countered by a lot of things, but it's really good. Good, good job, Zareth. Good, good analysis here. Now, ETH Kron is still a thing. It's still okay. It's not getting you any turn meter like it used to. It, it even it, it they broke it too far. Like they didn't just fix the Kron. They made it so that it, you don't get any turn meter at all from getting foresight. Sorry. I mean, I didn't have it happen to you, but I still think he's probably the fifth best character on a Qui-Gon team. I, I don't, folks, for the record, I don't like Keller and Beck as lead in GAC, uh, because most of his stuff is good, in, because Territory Wars buffs are really nice there. He still works really nicely on a Qui-Gon team, but I do think Qui-Gon, if you have his Omicron, this is going to be the best team. I think this is going to probably be the best version of the Qui-Gon team. I could be wrong, but I think this is my... I mean, maybe if you put Plo on the team, but I, I think Plo has higher aspirations and wants to work with other galactic legends and uh eth eth got nerfed to so much obscurity that <laughs> it's it's kind of a microcosm of his character people are like what what even is eth from and when you tell him star wars they're like no but seriously like <laughs> is he like star trek or something is he a ferengi i know he's not even close to that don't 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 at me bro uh we have the resistance team was Zori. I, I think we're back to using resistance, uh, not not hero, just resistance Poe, the OG Poe, and I got him up to relic six, guys. That's how that's how confident I am that this is probably the team we want. Um, just keep in mind that there's only what like one attacker. What I guess Rose is kind of an attacker. She she just kind of gets destroyed pretty quickly on this team. But she's the best. She's she's pretty good on this team. If you put a support Kron with them, uh, you, you can do some cool stuff. Like Zori is going to basically be uh, fueling everything for that team, and so, uh, yeah, I, that's what I would use. Support Kron if you can, on defense, because people still fail to it, folks, even though they don't have, like, a really compelling Kron, it's still pretty good. Now, that when I say leftovers for Saw, I mean, they are super leftovers. They are very leftover. They're, <laughs> they're the characters that apparently no team wants. Now, I've been campaigning for Baze forever, so I feel terrible taking him off of all of the significant awesome teams and putting him on a leftovers team. However, if you put a support Kron with Saw and you have a couple attackers, which Turret counts as one and Wedge would count as one as well, then that support Kron is still going to dial up your attackers. Like, Turret isn't going to be as amazing as he was when he had the Turret Kron a few Data Kron seasons ago, but he is still going to start hitting like a truck just maybe a smaller truck, it, it, like a non-lifted truck. He'll still be able to do some good damage. Wedge 2, and you'll be able to have some nice tanking from Baze and Cara Dune. I don't think this team is going to be worthless on defense. I do think it's going to be a lot easier to beat now. And I would recommend 
thinking a little bit before you just throw this team haphazardly on defense. I think it could get some get defensive holds, but if you don't use a support cron, I just wouldn't expect that many good things because it doesn't have it doesn't have all the things that make it amazing, like Kyle Katarn or Lotion, etc. So we also have Queen Amidala here. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the better versions of this squad. I, I've heard rumors that there is a really cool build, but of course no one wants to share that. So this is the build that I think could end up being pretty decent with them you can use a support cron for this team i mean guys if you don't have 10 million support crons you're doing it wrong and uh, <laughs> i don't have 10 million either but this this team really wants a support cron as well and i like i like having shock t and yoda here also contributing to the support everyone's support here folks uh, i mean she's support you guys can't see it because my face is in the way he's an attacker and then support 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 they're all supporting and it just contributes to padawan kenobi just nuking the f out of everyone because they're these guys all hand buffs to people and that they therefore hand debuffs to your opponents and it, it's gonna be a whole big awesome mess hopefully Maybe not. Maybe there's a better version of this, but I do like this version of it. Um, uh, so I waffled for a while, folks. Uh, Malgus, if you have the tank revive Kron, I just don't. Yes, it kills Inquisition. I just don't think we're going to see Inquisition on defense that often, uh, because Phoenix are going to be killing Inquisition, and so I would put Malgus with the tank revive level three from set sixteen on. And just annoy people, just really, really frustrate them because they can't use their Cal, their Jedi Cal team to counter it. They're gonna have to use something good, like I mean, I, but they'll use Sid Eternal. Sid Eternal is fine to use against it, and and then it's just gone. I mean, I love this team for offense, folks. I really do. I think it's gonna be a really strong team for offense. But if you need a team for defense, this is, this is, there, there are worse teams than this one for sure. And then finally we have Grievous. This one is going to steal banners and annoy people. You really do want that Omicron on stap because otherwise people are just going to outspeed you and you're going to lose all your whole team without really doing much damage. I think with stap though, the people have to take some serious consideration into what they use because you can start getting that turn meter train going, and if you put an attacker cron on them, or let's put a support cron on, I don't even think there's a support character on the team, but one way or another, <laughs> let's just do it just, just to show off the millions that we have. Now, the, this is this team is it, it's it's right right in the middle of you're going to steal some banners probably, or you're going to make your opponent really think for a while, most likely. Maybe there's some people who are transcendent and know exactly what to use against it, but it's decent on defense. I'll probably will end up putting it on defense a little bit. Using an attacker cron is fairly obnoxious with it, and uh, you don't you don't really need B2 for Afra these days. And not, not for this set, at least, as long as you have uh, the teams that i've recommended on offense so go watch that video folks and i think we're done here less than 20 minutes on the defensive teams because there's not many that i recommend there i think i think we're over the 11 at least 11 teams suggested so hopefully this helps you guys let me know what your thoughts are in the comments area would love to hear what your thoughts are uh, and what teams what teams are crazy strong that I missed? I, I honestly would genuinely love to hear that, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, I hope you prevail. Take care, folks.